This is not <clears throat> the best video call. However, I intend to upgrade this uh, to something more uh, usable and more uh, better uh, film and audio quality. In the meantime, I want to talk about, uh, continue to have a conversation about a project to bring together people across the country, across different ideologies, different viewpoints, different political moral tribes, and to find better ways to converge on what we can call common moral terrain, things we agree with, sentiments we share, but often express in very different political languages and in different ways. Uh, people on the left and the right, they enshroud themselves in different symbols, and this often causes them to break the world into a false binary of us versus them kind of my tribe against your tribe, and this means that they are more primed, or likely to be primed, to see anything coming from the other side, whether they're talking about police, justice reform, uh, racism, uh, sexism, or corruption and crony capitalism, anything said by the other side, quote unquote, is often going to be seen in a hostile way, and people are going to wall themselves off to listening and, and avoiding building a dialogue and they often make up their minds about what the other side has to say before they even um, have a chance to break down the message and, and to seek, uh, you know, before they even are able to listen to what's really being said beneath the surface. And very often what you see when people do lower these tribal psychological barriers of us versus them, and they look beyond the symbols, they look beyond the don't tread on me flags versus the occupy fist flags, and they simply look beneath the surface of this political language, we often see shared sentiments uh, of a love of, uh, a love of human dignity, of freedom, a desire for justice, the accountability of government, the desire for political power not to be concentrated in too few hands, and an overwhelming um, uh, you know, dissonance and uh, dissatisfaction with the way our system's been corrupted, the, the, the kind of money and corruption at the heart of our political system should be a nonpartisan issue that easily traverses political fault lines and brings people together in conversation from occupying the Tea Party or even to John Voigt, who was a Tea Party celebrity, to freaking Russell Brand, who works with the uh, Occupy movement. Both of these groups and their various celebrities should be in a public conversation to try to identify what they agree on and find ways to tear down some of these barriers to listening. And we can remain in our different political camps. We're never gonna all agree. We have legitimate differences, both in ideology, politics, as well as even in brain wiring and different moral axes people have, something that moral psychology often talks about. We're wired to value different things. Some people wanna live in the countryside and be left alone. Others wanna live in the city and some people value more liberal things and some value more conservative things. That's fine, we can remain uh, engaged in a legitimate tapestry of different views and amidst a diverse political landscape. But in spite of that, we can still traverse some of these artificial barriers. And, and this is excessive polarization, where every single issue has been politicized beyond what's normal. This is the result of decades of conditioning and a kind of primal psychology of us versus them tribalism that's been just enshrined into the very fabric of our discourse and how we have conversations. This has put us into these very problematic modes of thinking where we are unable to listen to other people outside of our sphere and we are unwilling to refine our own views. This does not have to occur. This doesn't have to be as bad as it currently is. We can do better and we can aspire to be better. And that's why Americans need to talk to Americans and people across the, the country, coast to coast, from hipsters in Portland to gun-toting conservatives in Texas or Missouri to people, uh, minorities that live in public housing or that live in cities, that live in the countryside, and people across political ideology should s sit down together and find ways to humanize each other, build that empathy, build that moral imagination so the liberal can better relate and understand what it's like to be, you know, a working class person who supports the Tea Party and avoid this broad brush of stereotyping people in the Tea Party as being racist. That is bullshit. At the same time, people on the right can learn to humanize liberals and understand and that very often they're coming from a good place and they often share some of the same concerns and that they shouldn't all be demonized using this broad brush. There are many different kinds of liberals. There's even a civil war going on 
within the left by people like Dave Rubin and Sam Harris who are standing up to what we call their aggressive left, the people that engage in identity politics and race baiting and, and will ignore atrocities in the Muslim world at the expense of uh, Christians. I mean, this, this is, the, these distinctions need to be made. There are reasonable people on the right that are willing to stand up against the dogmatism and tribalism and identity politics we currently see today that have hijacked the GOP, arguably for decades, but are reaching a tipping point of absurdity. We have people on the right, we have conservatives that can stand up to this and build a bridge of dialogue with the left. At the same time, we have liberals that often share values with many conservatives and libertarians and are willing to stand up to the excesses of ideological leftism and their aggressive left. So we need to build these conversations and identify what we agree on and move forward into a better way of tackling problems that should not be divided between left and right. Problems like political corruption. We may not agree on all the solutions. We should agree it's a problem, and we should agree it's worth going after. And many of our answers, if we look at this skeptically and scientifically, such as the revolving door of politics and money, if we really look at this problem, most of the time the answers are not limited to one side or the other. They often transcend ideology. So getting money out of the heart of our political system should be a shared problem, an arms race of political science and evidence and understanding and dialogue from coast to coast. And people have been dividing us into these and balkanizing us into these different camps between poor whites and poor blacks or during the Nixon and Reagan era and the, the, you know, the use of the Southern strategy to try to tap into fear and resentment. Uh, my background is uh, psychological operations and information warfare in the U.S. military. I speak Arab, Arabic and a number of other languages to varying degrees. I've been to Iraq, Afghanistan, Africa, all you know, different parts of the Middle East. Uh, I've, I've seen, you know, lived in Europe for a few years, and I am well versed in the science of uh, psych psychological engagement, understanding target audiences, and understanding how to play on these target audiences, and to drive a wedge between different groups as well as to bridge dialogue when it helps combat extremism. For example, in the Anbar province, we we helped shape the battle space by building bridges among tribal leaders, uh, among the Sunnis, against Al-Qaeda, who are mostly foreign fighters. At the same time, there's ways to mitigate conflict between Shia and Sunni. This could be a positive use of understanding human psychology and multifaceted media and, and engaging different target audiences. There are ways to do that, but there are ways to use it for the worse. And they've been using it to divide and conquer Americans, and I see it every day. It's absolutely soul-crushing. And we can do better. We can fight back. We can have a science of unity and common ground across the American landscape and find ways to build a conversation and find a language that speaks to the moral psychology of people across uh, culture, across race, across demographics, and find a way to talk about this in a way that speaks and resonates with people coast to coast. And let's use that to fight back. Thank you.